African American Oral History in Prince George's County, Maryland. This is a series that explores and captures the rich and diverse contributions of noted African Americans. Each has a unique and personal story, all told in their own words. My name is Cleopatra Curtis, better known as Cleo. This is my oral history. I was born in Prince George County in this house, July the 28th of 1928. I've come from a family of 14 children. I am the 13th one. And I had 10 brothers, three sisters, and a brother. I went to a two uh, uh, Catholic school, parochial Catholic school, St. Mary's of Assumption, two rooms. It was very hot in the summertime and extremely cold in the winter. The blacks was in a two room uh, school. The first, second, and third and fourth grade was in the first room, fifth, sixth, and seven was in the second room. And the white children, school was behind the church, the Catholic church. My mother's name was Bertha Curtis. With, ten ch with 13 children, she was a house, a at home house mother. And uh, my daddy worked for the state road Andrews Field, and he did gardening at home. My mother worked on the farm with the boys, raising the crops and, and animals and whatnot. Well, my granddaddy was an Indian, a full bird Indian, and my mother, my grandmother was a a Caucasian, and uh, he was with, oh, I can't think of the man's name, a white guy who had about seven or eight hundred acres of land, and granddaddy came over here with him, and uh, at that time, he asked granddaddy, he said, you have a large family. Don't you want some of this land? So granddaddy said, I would love to have some. And he told him, he said, what do you want? And I think he gave him something like about 300 acres of land. I gave it to him. But back there, it was somewhere around 200 and some dollars he paid him for it. And so then granddaddy uh, stayed with him and uh, he died, and then I don't know how his land got portioned off. But anyway, uh, uh, granddaddy asked my daddy did he want part of the land, so he split it in half with my daddy. And he built his house out of, have you seen country blocks with a face on it, you know? The, well, that's what he built. Granddy built his house out of. And at that time, uh, it wasn't any block places around here. So he had to go down to the river, through the farm, with a horse and, and wagon, and bring his blocks up to build his house. See down bottom of this hill? You see a road. Okay. And granddaddy had nothing but big rose bushes all around the yard out here. Lilac bushes, and that's the way we come from down my house up where Donald came on the track on the mall and come up to Granddaddy's and sit up here until late at night and he tell them weird stories about headless horses and all that and we scared going going home. <laughs> Run all the way home, it'd be just that that uh, 
We would be just that frightened. And you don't have any of the rose bushes left, right? This one right there. That mm -hmm. was so pretty out there. I wish you could get a picture of it then. Uh, it was really, really Before pretty. the rain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It'll come out again. Mm -hmm. We had cows, sheep, horses, ducks, turkeys, geese, and... Uh, I think that that was just about it, yeah. For meat, for, for the, we, we, my mother did that and daddy raised them for food during the winter, always around November. And uh, between November and, uh, and December, because there was smoke, uh, we'd do link sausage also and hang them up and smoke them and we'd smoke the hams and whatnot. Oh God, anything would stay in a jar. We can apples, peaches, pears, applesauce, jelly, apple butter, and string beans, uh, sweet potatoes, uh, sausage meat, rabbit. We, we put all that in can for the winter. And my mother would can hundreds of jars. Not only that, she had sisters and whatnot and brothers who lived in the cities. And uh, she would can so they would have food, you know, and whatnot. During the time, they were giving out reddishing stamps for uh, meats and uh, sugar and whatnot. The only thing we had to buy from the store was spices and uh, sugar. We had our own lard. We would, would uh, at killing time from the hogs, make our own lard. We had our own barrels of flour. We had wheat fields and we'd take the wheat to the mill and we had our own cornmeal. So we just had to have spices and baking powder and things. My mother had a thing. The kids had to be baptized at six months of age. Rain or snow or whatnot, we were baptized, all of her children was. We were Catholics, yes. I still am, and the day that I die, I want to be buried from that Catholic church, yes. Oh, I was sort of a home person. I stuck close to mom and help her to can and cook the meals for those who was in the fields and whatnot. I didn't start dating until I was in my 20s or 21. My brothers was very protective of the girls. My oldest sister died uh, when she was about three or four. She hit her head on the well. We had a pump and uh, she slipped and hit her head on the well and uh, she died here in this house. And my older sister would go out in the fields with the boys and work. And my mom would work with the boys in the field. And I would do the cooking for the, you know, the dinners and the luncheons for them when they come in. I enjoyed it. I did a lot of knitting and sewing. And uh, those were the things that kept me busy. I went to Douglas High School, which was down the hill from where the Catholic school was. And I graduated from there in 1947. That was the last year they had 11 years for high school, then they add on the 12th year. So those who went in the 12th year had to do two years where we 
equals minus one. This is the high school part up here. This is the middle school, which was down that way. And on the far end was elementary school. I worked at uh, Congressman uh, Sass's home, did some uh, made work there. I worked for Captain Nash. I did some uh, same work there. Then I worked in Marble Theater as a clerk, as a cashier for several years. And uh, when I left there, I built the restaurant. I've never been married. Okay. I've never been married. I have a devoted friend of 50 some years, and he's like, he's my ace boo coon today. And, uh, well, the town was very segregated. We used to leave school and we'd walk down the streets. We had to get off the street and let the white kids walk. And they would do that, put their hands out like this to stop. You know, us from walking just, you know, because the street was theirs. And uh, we had a drugstore. The, the pharmacist there was named Dr. Kane. And my mother was very ill during the summer. And I uh, went up to get my mother to the doctor and got a prescription. He told her to take the medicine right then and there. So I went to this drug store. They had five stews to the counter. And Dr. Kane was very prejudiced. Uh, you could stand there and they'd be talking about horses, chickens, tobacco, and anything. And just to let you stand. So I asked him, I said, pardon me. He said, don't you hear me talking? I said, yes. I said, but my mother has to have her medicine now. So he went on talking. So I carried my mother back to the car, and I put her in the car, and I went to the grocery store and got a bottle of one soda for her to take her medicine. And I told her, I said, Mom, if ever, if God is my will, you will never have to go through this again. So that gave me the idea of putting up a place for the black folks, because they had to go around the back of the white people place to get anything they want to eat. Rain, snow, hail, or blow you, that's where they had to go. And uh, so at that time I came back by working in the theater and working. I was making, I don't know, like $21 a week or something per month. I had saved around $600. So I had a guy who uh, I asked my mom, could I have this piece of land? She said, no, you can't have it, but give me a dollar, you can have it. And that was to bond it, you know. So I said, well, you had that. And I, uh, my daddy was a carpenter. He and his father built this house. And I watched him put up steps and whatnot. I mixed the concrete, I knew the foundation was like that. I knew it wasn't smooth, but the bricklayer smoothed it out to make a nice foundation and whatnot. And <laughs> then I had a guy to bring me in blocks from Virginia. And when he go down to get lum lumber, he would get them at a price for me that I was able to get the blocks that I need. And then when the blocks was all up, the, the, the floor was down, the blocks was all up, I hired um, the carpenters to come in and whatnot. Well, I didn't do anything up to, on the top of that building because I'm allergic to heights. And uh, my girlfriend and I, after the put down the floor, we put down tall floor, you know, and whatnot. We built the counter, and we built the shelves. 
I built my restaurant in the year of 19, August of 1953. And uh, I had, my, when I first opened up, I had a two burner, all stove. And I was just selling like hamburgers and hot dogs and sodas and potato chips and ice cream and cakes and cookies. And the first winter I was there, Hazel came through. I never had any glass in my window. I only had a big Venetian blind. And Hazel smashed that Venetian blind up and everything, things was all over, all over the place. But yet, you know, I could function and what. But God was good to me. God has always been good to me. When they asked me, do I have a husband? I said, no, but I have a man that's at my side always. Because I took $600 and got those blocks and things to get that building enclosed. And, uh, then it was just a little square, just a square room, just like this. And I opened up, I, and then I had an outhouse. We had an outhouse then. And then I, I um, put in running waters and toilets inside. Yeah. We had home, down home food. We had pig's feet, chitlins, collard greens, uh, chicken, steaks, uh, barbecues outside, uh, sweet candy yams, just home country cooked down home food. My restaurant was operated from 1953 until 2005. If it wasn't for my parents and grandpa, uh, grandparents, I could not have purchased that land and built that place. No, I could not have. My greatest challenge was doing the motel. It was a great challenge because I didn't know too much about that other than making beds, keeping the house clean, and, and keeping things clean. Um, but it was wonderful. It was wonderful. My mother loved me going into restaurants. She thought it was a wonderful thing because there wasn't any black restaurants in the area. But when I decided to go into the motel business, a single black lady, she didn't, she wasn't too keen, keen on that. But she knew it was my dream and she went along with me. My greatest achievement in life was a single woman without a husband and a little bit of money and the challenge to go into business. And I made up my mind when I went into it, I wasn't going to have anyone coming in to take this away because I didn't pay for it. I wasn't going to have anyone coming in and closing me down because I keep, didn't keep up my bills. The joke thing was I had a brother that was an electrician and one that was a plumber. And there were times that I weren't able to pay my bill, electric bill on time. And they would come down and cut off my electricity. Well, no sooner my brother come home from his job, and I'd tell him this, he said, don't worry about it. He got and turned it back on. And then when I would get the money to pay my bill, and I would call him and tell him I was able to pay my bills, he turned it back on. and. Of course, you know, uh, that wasn't right. I'm not so happy by doing something like that. But me, that was, I had to keep the freezers going and refrigerators going. And that was 
the way of saving my pr merchandise. Yes, but uh, other than that, I, I don't regret any of the days there, not any of it. I worked when I was sick, I worked when I was tired, I worked when I was sleepy, but God brought me through. He brought me through. I would like to tell the young people of today, please get an education. Listen to your parents. They're not telling you these things to make it bad for you. They're trying to help you. I listened to my mother and father. I lied to them sometimes. I didn't do the things they want me to do, but I listened to them. And we all was born with a dream. Every last one of us give every last one of us a dream. Follow your dream. Follow it. But you have to have the education to back you up. Today, when I was coming along, I wanted to go to college. I didn't think I had the ability to go to college. My parents wanted to mortgage their farm. I didn't want them to do that. So I had to struggle. And uh, I made up my mind whenever I earned a dime, I would take that dime and put nine cents of it away and use the penny for foolish things. You must, must learn this. You must, if you get paid, don't live from payday to payday. I tell my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren, which are foster children of mine, don't live from day to day, payday to payday. Always put a portion of your money in the bank every payday and let it multiply. So when you come to your dream, you have something to build on. I had to milk cows. I have sawed wood. I have cut blocks for wood. I build forests. I don't want you all to go through that labor. We had to slap hogs with, and, and, and all of this. Feed chickens. You don't have to go through that today. So build your dreams that you can always say thank God. 